now we've got a member of the Judiciary Committee, Connecticut Senator Richard Blumenthal. Hey, uh, Senator, always great to talk to you. Let me start with the most obvious question. Can you trust the word of the United States Attorney General? The United States Attorney General should be brought back to the Judiciary Committee so we can know why he apparently falsely denied that he had meetings with the uh, Russians. The only way he can really restore full trust and credibility is to answer our questions under oath and correct and clarify right. the record so that the integrity and credibility of the Department of Justice is really sustained. And that's very, very important because so, so the Senator, Chief Senator, Law Enforcement so let me Officer ask you has though, just let, let me just ask you point blank. Did he lie? When, he, based on all the information that you know, when he was in front of the Judiciary Committee and told you and the entire committee in response to Senator Franken's question that he had never met with any members of the Russian government. We found out that he met with it twice. Did, did he lie in front of the Judiciary Committee? He certainly made a seemingly false statement. There's no way to explain it based on what we know now other than to say it was a false denial of that meeting which is why he needs to come back and testify under oath. And what would you like him to say when he comes back? I'd like him to explain what was said during that September 8th meeting. Remember, it was at the height of the campaign season, during a time of widespread reports of Russian interference in our election and possible complicity and connection between the Trump campaign and the Russians. And that kind of meeting requires an explanation who said what? How did the meeting take place? Who has notes about it that we can see? And what came of it? And also, uh, what other meetings there may have been? Because if he misled us as to that meeting, what other meetings might he also have failed to disclose? If he lied to your committee, uh, do you believe perjury charges against him should be pursued? What I really believe, Joe, is that he should be cooperative in the investigation that's ongoing right now. The FBI is at the tip of that spear, and we need to know all of the facts involving potential complicity or connection between the Trump campaign, but also the Trump transition team and the Trump administration and the Russian interference. It was not just a, an accidental or coincidental interference. It was a sustained attack on our democratic institutions, an act of war, cyber attack on the United States of America. And that's really the focus that I think should be right now. The possibility of criminal charges maybe ought to be reviewed, but the point is that the violations of the perjury statute, the false statement statute are complex and difficult to prove. The important thing is to protect the United States of America and the integrity of our democratic institution. So, Senator, the questions surrounding all these stories we've been talking about, where there's a lot of smoke and not yet fire at the center of it, all these meetings, including the one that Jeff Sessions had with the ambassador, is was the Trump campaign complicit in this act of war, as you've called it, with Russia? Were they working hand in hand to get Donald Trump elected president? Knowing what you know now, do you believe they were working together? I believe that there was involvement or knowledge by members of the Trump campaign, certainly some knowledge about what was going on. That's clearly apparent from the circumstantial evidence. But even if there was not, we need to get to the bottom of exactly what happened. And there's a circumstantial case to be made here but there needs to be more proof before we draw any conclusion. So when you say that, who do you think specifically knew what was going on? And when you say what was going on, what do you mean by that? Any connections, contacts between the Trump campaign and the Russians give rise to the supposition that there may have been some involvement. But that as yet has not been shown by the evidence. So let's not leap to conclusions. Let's let the FBI do its work. And if there was any connection or complicity, that will be uncovered. The most important point here is to avoid a cover-up, because as has been frequently observed on this very show, the cover-up is as bad often as the crime. And that's why we need to get to the truth.
was there any complicity or improper contact, contact between the Trump campaign and the Trump transition and the Trump administration that may have either knowingly or otherwise mm -hmm. encouraged or emboldened the Russians to do what they did. There's no question, apparently none, from what the FBI has told us, that the Russians did interfere in the campaign and in the election. But you're not ready to connect those dots. You're, let the FBI do it if it's there. Uh, Casey Hunt has a question for you in Washington, Senator. Senator, you've called the FBI the tip of the spear on this more uh, broad question about these investigations. Do you have full faith in Jim Comey, the FBI director? If the FBI is given the resources it needs, I believe that the trained professionals there have the capacity and the determination to uncover the truth. But they need to be given the independence and, in fact, protection from political interference. And that is, Casey, the key question going forward. Not just the Attorney General recusing himself, but appointing a special prosecutor, an independent prosecutor, who will have the mandate and the independence to conduct an objective, fair, directly involved investigation here, which is very, very important, not only to the outcome, but to the credibility and trust of the Department of Justice. And I'm going to be calling later in the day, a number of my colleagues and I are going to be writing to the chairman of the Judiciary Committee asking that Jeff Sessions be brought back and answer these questions under oath because I think it's not only important for the FBI to investigate, but for him to correct that record and avoid a perjury prosecution if one is required under the record right now. The question of the FBI investigation will concern whether or not perjury was committed in the Judiciary All right. Committee. John? Uh, just real quick, Senator, uh, you, you raised the question of, um, of the, the others who were in these meetings. Um, Senator Sessions yesterday, um, helpfully in some ways, put three of his aides in these meetings that he had with the Russian ambassador. So uh, is the Judiciary Committee a forum in which uh, those aides could be subpoenaed, brought forward in front of the committee, uh, so we could find out what the substance, or at least try to find out what the substance of those conversations with the ambassador are? Great question. Part of what I think needs to be done as a former prosecutor as the former federal prosecutor and state attorney general is for those staff members to be questioned by our committee, the Judiciary Committee, so that we can reach a conclusion about whether there was perjury and also why Attorney General Sessions may have falsely denied, in fact did falsely state that there were no meetings. And so those notes that they took, undoubtedly they took notes, and their recollections ought to be tested and ought to be used to refresh his recollection about what happened. All right, Senator Richard Blumenthal, Democrat of Connecticut. Always good to see you, sir. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Still ahead this morning. If you don't fund the State Department fully, then I need to buy more ammunition, ultimately. More than 100 military leaders are citing that quote from Defense Secretary James Mattis to push back on the president's plan to slash foreign aid. Among them, former NATO commander James Stavridis, who joins us ahead on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.